Welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. We're so glad you could join us today. We have something really exciting. We are gonna go through all the different roses we grow here on the farm, at least the ones that we get the most requests for, for number one, uh, bridal um, design work, bridal bouquets, that kind of thing. We're also the ones that like a um, florist will ask for that kind of rose and we're going to kind of go through the pros and cons of why we like them, how they smell, how they hold up, what we use them for in our own designs, that kind of thing. So we grow probably, and there's a little over 700 roses here on the farm. I believe we have anywhere from 15 to 25 varieties of roses and some we just have like one bush others we have loads of bushes so anyways I just thought it'd be kind of fun to take you along and just kind of show you what we have here and the girls came with me and did this with me which was really fun and um, yeah so anyways enjoy we have some barn swallows nesting in our little birdhouse our dilapidated birdhouse that needs a little TLC but we can see maybe two little baby birds and the mom and papa are coming and feeding every morning. It's super fun here by the yurt garden. So this is Elena. We love this rose because it smells really good. And it looks just so flouncy. It makes me think of like, uh, what's it called? Oh, like Gone with the Wind vibes, like their dresses. Oh yeah, totally. Like the big, um, what is that time period called in America? The poof dresses? Yeah, but like the big hoop ones, but it's specifically a time, antebellum the antebellum Ante dresses you know what i mean yes they're beautiful flouncy annoying to sit in but gorgeous you know what does the it romantic. smell like riley what does it smell like um butter <laughs> they look like butter i can't smell anything and maybe what? that's just me we're here in the early morning so they don't really smell yet because the sun hasn't warmed them yet but they still have dew on them and it looks like they're bedazzled like with the sun coming up looks like they're like a bunch of sparkly little petals i'm gonna try and show folks what i'm talking about they're gorgeous i love this rose i don't use it very often but she looks amazing in the garden like look at her face let me just show you Look at that. Stop it right now. This is her like pretty much fully opened. You can see just the volume that is in my hand. Isn't that cool? It's huge. Huge. And it's so sparkly. Like if you see it in the sunlight this way, you can see. Can you see it? The dew sparkling on them. Quite an experience if I do say so. So we're just out here lollygagging. No, we're cutting roses for mixed bouquets. Um, these lovely pink ones. And we have to make sure that they're pretty tight because bouquet markets going to grocery store, they have to last a really long time. So we can't cut this for a bouquet. So they have to look like this. And yeah, I'm just trying to avoid getting thorned. Oh, and this is Bewitched, by the way. And she's also a big boy. Look at that. They're cousins. Big flouncy boy. Bedazzled. Anyway, I'm tired today. It's I haven't finished my coffee. Family. I have a large coffee and waiting for me in the studio and I can't chug it till I finish this so y'all need to leave me alone so I can finish my job. <laughs> 
This one's called Tiffany. She's a beauty. We've got quite a few of her. And we use it mainly in just little bits of wedding and then also in just home design, that kind of thing. So this one is like one of my all-time favorites and it makes me really sad that it's planted in the back of a rose garden which was a bad planning on our part but it is what it is. Maybe once we dig up these roses and move them she can have the moment that she deserves because look at that face. That is just like the most beautiful rose you've ever seen, right? These are called hot cocos and they get that name for being that like cozy, rusty, uh, red color I swear I have a lipstick that is exactly this color and that's one of my favorite lipsticks um, and it's just so pretty the face of it is gorgeous and romantic like a garden rose and it's lovely because its head is small enough that it's easy to work with and they look fantastic in any fall weddings even in like having a little bit of a touch of a mauve wedding in there because it is a more mauvey red it blends in really well if you're wanting some depth you're shadowing the rose <laughs> I don't know I think they're fantastic they need to have their moment they are a very popular rose so we do get a lot of demand for these especially towards the fall and winter time um, well you know early winter when they're still growing but yeah they're gorgeous they need they need to be showcased more All right, um, so I've just been going through this first row. It's called Queen of Elegance. Um, it's one of our favorite flowers to use. We use it a lot for weddings. Um, this is kind of what it looks like. It's kind of a raspberry yeah. color. It's really pretty. Um, and the tighter the bud, the darker it is, so it kind of lightens up. Um, and it smells really like, it's very light smelling. It's not, Super strong at no. all. Um, I love all those like little roughly mm -hmm. petals inside. It's like, I don't know, it's almost like a cabbage rose. Yeah, it looks really pretty. I know. It's one of our favorites. It's one of our personal favorites. We do not get a lot of requests for this one, no. even though people should order this one. It's yummy. And it it's very pretty. Yes, it kind of reminds me of Bridgerton. The yes, colors, like for when sure. we do weddings like that. <laughs> we were watching that the other day, yeah. and I thought, oh, this it rose does. definitely a Bridgerton rose. It looks like that. Okay, on to the next one. This one is called New Zealand, and it's so pretty. It's kind of like a bubblegum pink almost, um, with like cream. Oh, it's so pretty. Almost like a peachy bubblegum, yeah. right? Peachy. This one smells really good. It's like that old fashioned. Very perfumey. Oh, I would love a perfume that smells like this. It smells I, so souls good. in life to create yeah. a perfume. <laughs> but when it comes to the florist, so a lot of times florists don't order it because it, it looks, looks like, like that. Neon. Neon salmon, salmon but Manny Fanny. Is that a word? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I the turkey know thinks this. it's funny. Jimmy thinks it's funny. <laughs> But it's, that one's a really fun one. So this one is called Celestial Night. Um, it's more of a raspberry purple. We also have another one right next to it that's very similar, but it's called uh, Twilight. 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 I always think of the, the movie Twilight. Yes, and it's much more of a purple, I would say. But yeah. So this is the, I'm walking this way, trying not to make you dizzy. I can cut too, so you can compare. Oh, yeah. This one, I think it's down here, Emma, a little further. It's really deep. Like when it ages, they're really similar. But yeah, I would say... This um, one definitely has more of a purpley. The Twilight is definitely okay. purple. So now we're on to the ones that are the most requested by Floris. And uh, yeah, so we thought we'd take you through those really quick. So we just cut really heavy last night, so we'll show you some of the ones that are a little more open. So this one is called Coco Loco, and it is probably, I would say, the second most requested 
maybe third most requested rose yes. that we have here on the farm. It's beautiful. It is a stunner. And um, anyways, yeah, we'll show you here. So this is it fully open, but it's very romantic. It's kind of got like a mauvey brown. It's like a grayish purple brown. I don't know. It could go with a lot of wedding colors and palettes that are just that moody. But it looks so different. Yeah, so that's it when it first comes on and then it ages. So like we have the luxury of cutting it when it's a little bit more open. Yeah. Okay, you want to smell that one? Ooh. It's more of a sweet, almost like, um, this is going to sound kind of gross, but good. Like squash? Like... <laughs> Like a fall smell. Nice. Oh. I want to smell it. Yeah, smell. It's like a rose mixed with. Um, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Oh my gosh. It smells like a it delicious does. like pumpkin like when pie. You, yeah, when you first cut open your pumpkin or squash, that's what it smells like. But like a dessert. <sighs> that's sweet. beautiful. <gasps> Love that. <laughs> okay, now on to our next one, which is the most requested that we have on the farm. Doesn't look all that good because it's one of our first bloomers and it is done until it's next flush and we definitely need to give it some loving with more compost and more fertilizer. <laughs> so this one is called Distant Drum, but this is how it opens. It's very, very romantic as well. Not a lot of smell to it. Let me see if I can find a bud. Here's a bud. I mean, it just doesn't. We just cut so heavy last night. We had an order for, um, I forget, it's like 70 <laughs> bunches or something like that. So, so not many left. There's not any left. <laughs> this is, this is maybe can show you. We need to get in here spray. But isn't that gorgeous? Just open. And this kind of striated petal, it's really singly. Singly? I don't think that's a word either. I'm making up words. <laughs> but you can see we had really hot weather the last couple days. And all the roses that or some of the roses that were open kind of have this browning on the petals. Uh, that's just because it was a hundred degrees. So, anyways. All right, so this one is called the Honey Dijon. It kind of reminds me of Distant Drum, but in yellow. Not Distant Drum, uh, Coco Loco. Um, they have that almost cool toned yellow with a little bit of purple in it. Um, it just seems like there's a certain type of rose that all kind of look similar, but they're different colors. So this one's really cool. It's one of our favorites as well. Um, Got that, that kind of mustardy, warm color, but at the same time, it almost looks like a cool tone yellow. Yeah. 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 I like it mainly. Also kind of smells like the... Um, melon? Yeah. Not melon. Um, Squash-ish. Squash. But like a dessert, like pumpkin pie-ish. But lighter. Oh, yeah. Totally. There's like a cinnamon-y. Yeah. Cinnamon. Interesting. Um, so these ones actually kind of keep that same color and bud form. So it's not super confusing when you're buying them when they're a little more closed up. They kind of stay the same color. Uh, this one you can see it when it's really tight it's um, a lot darker. But yeah. Yeah because sometimes I mean these are pretty open. I. I feel like, oh, here we go. Let me show you over here. It'll have this like striation of red on the sides. And so some people, it took a while for them to kind of say, oh, this is a beautiful rose. Yeah. I like how that opens and um, because of that red. But yeah, roses just change. You can tell all the, all the different colors kind of coming on from that creamy, creamy yellow on up to just really golden. Not fun. These we probably <laughs> sell the most of. They're called Pope John Paul II. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, and 
The reason we sell most of these is because very popular for weddings. <laughs> white is always white popular. White is always popular for weddings. Most people want white flowers. Um, I wouldn't say most, but weddings tend to be on the lighter airy kind of thing. Whether it be like a blush wedding, they'd still maybe want some white in it. Um, it's a good color. It's good to match with other colors. So, so we have had quite a bit of rain. So yeah. there's a lot of damage. The white ones show the most damage, but for some reason, this um, Saint Paul John John what Saint Paul no yeah Saint Paul no I don't know. <laughs> It's a saint and it's a Paul and it's white. Pope okay. John Pope Paul John the Paul. Second. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. <laughs> oh, we have an audience. Uh look at Shy is just like going nuts. Wants to play wants to play. Okay. Back to roses. So this one, what I love about this one is it's got a very sturdy stem. Long, long stem, and it's just doesn't have very many thorns. Either. Yeah, and there's not a lot of disease on it too. It just does really well for us, and it is prolific. It just blooms and blooms and blooms. You can see all these massive amounts of buds, and it smells incredible. This is one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, it is just delicious. It is a, like a true rose smell. Yeah. Um, this one's past its prime, just a yeah. little bit, but oh. Yeah, you can probably smell. Oh yeah, that's yummy. <laughs> Love that. Oh, that smell. It just smells very clean. Yeah, very clean. And so we're just going through today and kind of deadheading any of the ones. It's really hard to do because they're gorgeous, but deadheading some of the ones that have kind of. Um, so what we do? Let me show you. Oops. It's called. We're disbudding basically. So you can see where we have all of these beautiful blooms coming on. We'll take out that center one that's past its prime. And then we could cut this to sell. So, and then a lot of times when we're back in the studio, we just tend to take off some of the guard petals that are kind of, since we had so much rain, um, they're just kind of looking a little tattery. And uh, so we'll take those off. But yeah, we have... It's so hard when you find like perfect roses like look at this it's like a perfect swirl it is gorgeous i need to put some in the house yeah oh, so good. okay this one is called easy spirit we also sell a lot of this one because it is this white or not white um like a light blush cream color really good for weddings. really good for weddings it's so beautiful and it smells Amazing. It's, yeah, it is another one that you can see the the rain damage there. Um, yeah. Trying to cut it. I got it's not, okay. That one doesn't smell. <laughs> I, they, <laughs> roses, they're funny because they tend to smell really good after the sun bakes them a little bit. Yeah. In the evening? Yeah, in the oh, evening yeah. it's... You walk out here and the whole garden smells like roses. Oh my God. So we're gonna take you back up to the house to go see some David Austin roses, which are some of our favorites. They're a little more fancy and we use them for weddings. Um, so come along with us. Okay, so this is another early bloomer for us. This is called Darcy Bustle. Doesn't really have a smell, but it is just kind of that classic, it's kind of almost like between the reds and the uh, kind of purpley color. And it does really well in weddings. Um, we use it a lot in weddings actually, but it's got a nice long stem link. They put off, you know, it's, it's pretty done already, but it's pretty disease resistant. It's a good one. I really like it here on the corner. We cut pretty heavy on it because we had a wedding. It had these exact colors and yeah, it's really fun. Okay, on to the next.
Okay, this fun one we think is all Brighton Rambler, but we're not sure. I lost a tag for it. I planted these when we first moved in. You can see how big and tall they are. I'm almost, well, I am what, five, I guess. <laughs> what are you, Ben? How tall am I? I'm 5'4", so you can see this is pretty tall. We cut heavy on this yesterday as well. And just really light rose smell, not a lot at all with that one. Okay. Okay, so this one is called Windermere. And again, I planted this when we first moved in, so long time ago. It's huge. And what's really great about it is look how disease resistant. A little bit of black spot underneath, but it does really, really well. And it has a very nice light fragrance to it. What I love about this one, I don't know if you can get close to this Emma or not, but it's kind of got this like creamy center to it and then it opens up to this white. It holds really well for us as well. And look at that stem length. Like if I was to cut that for a wedding, even for like a large urn, that's like 24 inches long, if not longer on some of these. Yesterday I was cutting huge and I could have gone longer than that. So really fun. I mean, this one is as long as my arm. Can you see that? That's yeah. how long I could cut that. Super fun. Love this one. Great. So I've got two of those bushes. And then back here, this is also one of my absolute favorites. This is Crown Princess Margaret. Amazing. So I want to get more of these. I only have one. And, you know, this is just right off my kitchen window. I can see all these beautiful David Austins. We have about 10 of them right here. Oh. Peachy, yummy, lovely, love it. But I love how it fades. And uh, this one's also very, very popular in weddings. It holds pretty well for us. Again, very nice long stem length for them. These are huge, huge rose bushes. They just get ginormous compared to some of the other ones we have in the back. So, moving on. So this one is kind of past its prime as well. We need to deadhead fertilize again and sorry so this one's called Munstead Wood and it is a beautiful kind of cabbagey rose type I don't think it's actual cabbage rose but it looks like it to me um, but it's got like darker petals with kind of like a raspberry center to it it does have a lovely smell it really does it's kind of like an old rose smell but really really faint and light isn't that fun that's also a really fun one to use, but you can see it's got a lot of thorns. So it's, it says hello. So we're gonna come through here and just get these all cleaned up and they will put on a second flush for us. This next absolute stunner is called Carding Mill. She's already done her bloom cycle and we need to come in and clean her up. But here is one that she saved just for you guys. Isn't that gorgeous? It is almost like a salmon, peachy, coral mixture, but so beautiful. It's so pretty. It's like sunset. It's almost a little bit citrusy or kind of sweet. Kind of reminds me of like candy. Yeah. Or something like that. But this one's struggling. Um, <laughs> okay. So I can talk about it. Okay, this one I have really struggled with and I'm thinking I'm just going to take it out because unless I just do heroics, but it's called Young Lycetus. I think that's how you say that. I'm really good at pronouncing. It's kind of a raspberry color and it has just really struggled over the years. And you can see these are just, I need to get in here. This is ridiculous. I'm really embarrassed to show you, but this is the suckers that come off. So the original graft when they made this. And so this is all stuff that just comes from underneath the base. And, you know, a lot of our roses do this over time. Um, and you just have to get in there and cut it way back all the way down underneath if you can get it. Um, this one, I think because it's kind of tucked back, I don't see it very much. But you can see there's just a little bit blooming if I can wade myself through here from the original and I don't know if I can, it's really pretty, but I don't know if Emma, you can get close enough. 
it is gorgeous i it's not my favorite and it's just always struggled um for us and yeah it just smells very very faint as well on this one okay okay this monster which i absolutely love is called Lynchfield Angel. We sell a lot of this one. This one is probably the most popular out of all of the David Hostin roses that we sell. We get a lot of requests and part of it is because it is just almost like that natural shape to it. But look at that, you guys. Creamy, blushy, beautiful. Um, holds really well and disease resistant, fairly good. You know, we do have to spray our roses every once in a while, usually about twice a year. Um, I spray a little fungicide on them to try and keep the, you know, black spot down. But what's cool about this is like, look at that stem length. I mm -hmm. could cut that. Oh, I could cut that at like four feet, three feet. And then hanging something like that off of like, say for a wedding, an arch. Oh, it looks amazing. Like you can just take these huge bundles. And the benefit of being a farmer florist is that you could cut this on the day of a wedding we've done that to hang on an arch installation and we just do the fresh wraps the base of it and we stick them into the arch and then they just look like a rose is growing and vining it's really really cool so down here we just planted some more of them and you can see how big this thing gets i mean we cut these way back it's really crazy okay so come on So we do have more Lynchfield Angels here. We have five more of them because we do sell so many of them. These are two years old, so we don't really cut on them yet. We do occasionally for little, little floral arrangements and that kind of thing, but we're not cutting heavy on them at all. This one is another requested one that we get a lot. This is called Queen of Sweden, and she's a beaut. She is really, really pretty. She starts off kind of that salmon-y color and then moves into this beautiful just wedding pink i love this one and i love how you can kind of tell this is a little bit more of an upright habit to it grows more upright we're still this is um year two for them we got these as bare root from david austin um but see how this is like kind of like a cupped kind of cupped upward this actually works really well in bridal bouquets because of that um they can hold and then you know adding in these colors how beautiful we you can see we had over 100 degrees yesterday and we've been in the like i don't know 70s or so and got a little burnt a little sunburnt there on our roses so we'll come through deadhead clean it up and yeah these just make me really happy now there's two other roses that we have here on the farm that were here when we first came and i don't know the name so i'm going to ask you if you recognize it and can tell me the name because i have asked a lot of people and no one's been able to tell me so this is the beautiful rose and it is again just kind of that light pink blush color with as it ages it goes to a white um clustered i mean it's like viney we use this one again a lot in arches but it smells very very gentle rose and again after the sun's hit it baked it the whole yard smells like roses but this one i don't know the name of people ask me a lot of times this one's a fun one to use just as foliage as well like sometimes we'll cut it with just the little buds on it and use it as a fuller or fuller a filler <laughs> um or just kind of a romantic additives so it just looks like it's getting ready to bloom like on an arch or something anyways i don't know the name help us out again this one has that same coloring it's a little bit more pink um it's probably hard to tell but it is absolutely gorgeous as well and this one uh just kind of same habit forming it was here when we got here i don't know i don't know what they are so if you know or want to take a guess at it that would be awesome um i think we're just going to go around and show you a few other roses that we have here on the farm they've been here for years so i don't know the names of all of them but 
Um, they are gorgeous. Well, thank you so much for joining us again here at Crowley House Flower Farm. We so appreciate you um, just tagging along. If you find it in your heart or you know somebody that would appreciate our channel as much as you do, please share it with them. We would love to have them tag along with us here on the farm. Anyways, much success in all you do and grow and we'll be seeing you shortly here at Crowley House very soon.